matrix. So we are going to proceed to oblong method. For this, what what do we require is a rectangle. The rectangle, something of the uh, say this is a rectangle. My ellipse will be inscribed in this. Now what is this? This is the length of the major axis, and this is the length of the minor axis. So what I'm basically doing is that. I'm drawing a rectangle whose smaller side is equal to the minor axis and the longer side is equal to the major axis. So first of all, I'm going to draw a rectangle. So let's start. Now I'm going to draw a rectangle of PQRS with following dimensions. My height will be PS or RQ that will be my length of the minor axis and my width will be PQ and RS that is the length of my major axis. Let's start. So I have this rectangle P, Q, R and S where PQ and RS is the length of the major axis and PS and RQ or QR is the length of the minor axis. So now what I'm going to do is I have this uh, rectangle with me. I'll mark the midpoints of the upper side and the lower side and I'll join them. So I'll have the minor axis and I'll join the midpoints of the left hand side and the right hand side to get what to get my major axis. Let's look at the figure. Now I'll take midpoint of PS and QR and join them. If I join them, I'll get my major axis, something like this. This is the midpoint A of PS and this is the midpoint B of QR. So I have joined it to get what? This is my major axis. Now for my uh, minor axis, I'll take uh, midpoint of PQ and midpoint, midpoint of RS and join them. For uh, If I join both of them, the midpoint, I'll have my minor axis CD. And of course, I'm going to mark the midpoint as O as I always do. Okay. Now what we are going to do is we are going to divide these slides. First we are going to just consider the upper portion then we will go to the lower portion. So AP and AO into equal parts and OB and BQ into equal parts. To be specific we will be uh, dividing it into 7 equal parts. OA into 7 equal parts, OB into 7 equal parts, AB, AP into 7 equal parts and BQ into 7 equal parts. Now you should know we are doing this for the upper side of the uh, rectangle then if we repeat the uh, uh, this procedure for the uh, bottom side of the or the lower half of the rectangle we'll have the points which are there on the ellipse on the lower part so we'll start first i'll divide oa into seven equal parts that is one two three and four five and six and seven as you can see it appeared and then i will divide ob into seven equal parts that is one two three four five six and seven then I'll divide PA into seven equal parts. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, as you can see, as they are appearing on your screen. Then I'm dividing QB into seven equal parts. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I have these points. Now what next time am I going to do? I'm going to join point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, point six, and point seven to C on either side of the minor axis. From C, I'll draw a line to 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, and then 5, and then 6, and then 7. Then I'm going to do the similar thing on the right hand side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay. So now I have uh, these reference lines that is C1, uh, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7 six, six, on both the sides of the my minor axis. Now what I'm going to do is next. I am going to uh, do similar thing from D from uh, to the horizontal line uh, which is there on the major axis. I am going to uh, join D to 1 and then extend it to meet C1. You can see, see now I have the, I have taken this point because this point will be there on the ellipse so I marked it as red. Now D to 1 and then extend it to meet C1, D to 2 extend it to meet C2 d to 3 then extend it to meet c3 this is how we are going to do mark that point as p1 then d to 2 extend it to meet c2 p2 d to 3 extend it to meet c3 p3 then d to 4 extend it uh, to c4 then p4 then d to 5 then extend it to uh, c5 that is p5 similarly we have p6 now the same thing we are going to do on the right hand side so i have this uh, P1 dash, P2 dash, P3 dash, P4 dash, P5 dash, P6 dash and P7 dash. Repeating the same procedure that I did, so, say so, so, uh, so, sorry, I divide this A and S into 7 equal parts, B and R into uh, equal parts. 
seven equal parts. Now these parts will be joined by D through the lines just as we did from C to one. And then through C we are going to pass lines that we did actually through D. So uh, I'll have what? I'll have my say one by one you'll see. You'll have these points and then you'll have the points on the other side of the minor axis. So this is what we have. Now these are all the points on the ellipse. Now what we are going to do? The same thing that we do, we will join e all the points starting with uh, in, in clockwise direction to C to P1 to P1 dash to P2 dash P3 dash and this way and then we'll finally again going to reach to C. So we have the required ellipse by the oblong method. I hope you understood very simple these methods are very simple you just have to plot the points on ellipse once you have the points on ellipse you have to join all the points to get what to get the uh, required uh, uh, ellipse the final method that we are going to discuss is the directrix focus method now this uh, method should be understood very closely it is it is also very easy but i have taken it at the last because it is it has a few glitches now we will discuss a few things before starting this method the first is it is based on first definition on ellipse in which we are going to th in this uh, method eccentricity will come into play before that eccentricity was uh, not coming no, not coming into play now uh, here i will tell you what uh, the directrix is yes so this is my focus and this is a line that has been drawn now this line would be directrix only if say if I'm, I have marked these one two three and four lines okay now I'll first take the distance of this line and then divide it by the distance of this line and then the ratio will be equal to say e, e1 and then this I'll take this line and then divide it by the connecting line uh, connecting line and then I'll take the ratio say e2 then the ratio will come to E3 and the ratio will come to E4. If all these are equal, that is E1 is equal to E2 is equal to E3 is equal to E4 is equal to E, then this line will be known as my directrix. So if I say what is the basic definition of directrix, then I'll say the directrix of a conic section is the line which together with the point known as focus serves to define a conic section. That is basically an ellipse. For this particular section, for parabola there will be also a directrix, for uh, hyperbola there also will be a directrix. In this directrix focus method, we are just concentrating on ellipse. So that is the thing. Okay. Uh, moving ahead, for discussion of this method, what we are going to do is we are going to make two assumptions. Uh, say we'll, this, this might be taken as an example. So I will take the focus as 70 mm away from the directrix and the, my eccentricity is 3 by 4 okay so what is my first step uh, the first step is to draw the directrix and to draw the axis that is cc dash there is no particular measurements for it it is just that ab should be perpendicular to cc dash or after drawing ab when you are drawing cc dash cc dash should be exactly perpendicular to ab so first is i'm drawing ab like this and then I'm going to draw CC dash, which is exactly perpendicular to AB. So this will be the line on which the major axis will be there. And minor axis will be parallel to AB. So this is the axis uh, which is passing through the center of the ellipse. Now we are we know that focus is uh, at a distance of 70 mm away from the directrix uh, on CC dash because that is the axis. So now let's see. I am going to mark F that is at a 70 mm distance from this directrix that is from point C. So CF is 70 mm. Okay. The next thing now we have CF. So we are going to divide it into seven equal parts. Now why I have taken seven is depends on my eccentricity ratio. See, my eccentricity ratio is three by four. So I'll add these two that is three plus four that is seven. So I'm going to divide it into seven parts. If I add uh, some other things say two by three, I'll divide it into five parts. Why five parts? So that I am able to make out on what is my end point, one of the end points that is there on the side of the directrix. So on the fourth division, I'll mark V. Let's uh, mark it first and then I'll tell you why this V is being marked on the fourth division. Okay, so I'm going to divide it into seven equal parts, zero, one, two, three, four, five and six and seven finally seven okay now i marked v on the fourth part as i said 
Now what is the thing is that my eccentricity ratio is 3 by 4. So my the cent uh, that is this point the point on uh, through which the ellipse will pass on this axis will be 3 points away from f and 4 points away from c. So from c 4 points away I have marked this point v. So this point v will be one of the points that is the end point of the ellipse that is one of the points on the extreme left hand side of the ellip ellipse on your screen. So I have marked this. So next step I hope you understood why I have marked point v, uh, v 4 clicks away from c and 3 clicks away from f. Now step number 4 at v we will erect a perpendicular. Now that perpendicular will be equal to uh, I will mark the end point as b dash and the distance will be equal to v to f that is the initial point of the ellipse and the focus something like this see this is v to f distance is equal to this I will erect a perpendicular at v and mark it as b dash understood now my next step I am going to draw a straight line passing through c and b dash this is a straight line passing through C and B dash. So, I am going to draw a straight line and extend it till my uh, paper. Now, why I have drawn this, you will be able to understand in the next step. Now, with F S center, I am going to draw a line which is at 45 degrees with C C dash. Now, why I am doing this to get my V dash point. How I am going to get the V dash? See, once I have drawn the 45 degree angle, it will intersect uh, uh, this c b dash at a, partic uh, at a particular point and I will mark that point as d. From d I will drop a perpendicular downwards on c c dash and that point uh, which where it interacts on c c dash will be v dash will be my other right hand side extreme point of my ellipse. See with uh, f s uh, from f for at angle of 45 degrees I will draw a line uh, which intersects at d for c b at d and then I will drop a perpendicular which is at v dash. Now this v and v dash is between what the ellipse will be created. Now we want uh, some points above and below so that we can construct the ellipse. We have both the endpoints, so we are going to construct the ellipse. Now what we are going to do is we are going to divide we are going to take a few uh, midpoint of v and v dash that is the center of we are going to find the center of the ellipse and then we are going to erect a perpendicular through that ellipse see this o o dash and this is the perpendicular this is the midpoint of vv dash and this is also the midpoint of the ellipse and vv dash is the minor major axis remember vv dash is the major axis and on this perpendicular line we will have the minor axis now what we are going to do is we are going to take a few more divisions in this part say 8 9 and 10 three more divisions i'll take randomly i'll take a point here 8 then i'll take 9 and i'll take uh, randomly i'll take 10 now my next step is through all these points that is 5, 6, 8, uh, 9 and 10 I am going to draw perpendiculars like this through 5, then 6, then 8, then 9 and then 10 and where these points are getting intersected on C, D I will mark this as 5 dash, 6 dash, 7, uh, 8 dash, 9 dash and and dash and this point will be o dash now why these is important because i need this distance 5 5 dash 6 6 dash uh, this distance will be important to me see 5 5 dash 6 6 dash uh, 8 8 dash o o dash 9 9 dash 10 10 dash these distances will be important to me in the next step that i'm going to do what i'm going to do is i'm going to take radius as 5 5 dash this is my first step i'll take radius as 5 5 dash put my center at f cut an arc on the same line 5 5 dash above and below the major axis and then i'm going to repeat the same procedure for 6 0 0.6 0 0.8 0 0.0 0 0.9 and 0.10 see with center uh, with radius is equal to 5 5 dash and center is equal to f i'll cut arc on this line above and below i'm going to mark points because if i mark arcs it won't be visible on the screen and mark this as p and p dash now I am going to do the similar thing, I am going to take radius as 6, 6 dash, 6, 6 dash, center as F and cut arcs here and here on this line and mark this as P1 and P1 dash, perfecto, then next for 8, radius will be 8, 8 dash, center as uh, F and cut arcs here and here at P2 and P2 dash, then P3 and P3 dash for O, O dash, then 9, 
for 9 for 10 I have done this now I have my different points on the ellipse now again the same old story I'm going to repeat now we also know that these are the endpoints so these will also be there on the uh, on the circle and when I join these points clockwise I have my ellipse through the directrix focus method so today we have discussed uh, what all things have we discussed first we'll discuss uh, discuss classification of engineering curves what types of engineering curves are there then we came to conics then uh, we discussed oh, what type of curves are created in conics then we started with construction of uh, ellipse then first we discussed uh, arc of circle method then we discussed concentric circle method then we discussed the oblong method thereafter we discussed the directrix focus method so what next so this session will come to an end today and the slide shows you what is in store for you next sunday same time 12 to 1 that is our trademark time we are not going to change that for conex for conex uh, conex will be continued next sunday in which we'll be discussing uh, parabola and hyperbola construction of different and then we're going to start with cycloidal curves if time is left because there are different methods for construction of parabola and different methods for construction of hyperbola and that will be next sunday 7th october 12 noon sharp now as always i give you a quote at the end this is what i love to do and discuss a little bit of philosophy so that uh, there is some inspiration that has been generated. You might uh, know Henry Ford. Henry Ford is an uh, English writer. Now, he says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, in both the conditions, you are right. So, it is basically saying that if you think you can, you will be able to do it. And if you think you can't, you won't be able to do it. So, that is what Henry Ford has said. And I believe that we always should think if we can. Then is no condition that is impossible if you try. So, begin trying before accepting your defeat try try and then if you get defeated there is no uh, regret okay i got defeated but i tried so that is the main thing that you have to do and if you have any query